This question is 2017 AMC 12A, problem 16. In the figure below, semicircles with centers at A and B, so this thing is A, this thing is B, with red eye 2 and 1 respectively, so this length is 2, this length is 1, are drawn in the interior of and sharing bases with semicircle with diameter JK. So big semicircle has diameter JK. The two smallest semicircles are externally tangent to each other and internally tangent to the largest semicircle. That's just telling us that they are intersecting at only one point. Let's go on. A circle centered at P is drawn internally tangent, so this thing is P, to the two smaller semicircle and internally tangent to the largest semicircle. So we have a bunch of tangency going on. Whatever that seems to be tangent is going to be tangent in the picture. What is the radius of the circle centered at P? So you want to find this radius, you want to find this. And something that may jump out at you as soon as you see this is that maybe we can connect these dots. We can connect the dots and form a triangle. And do we know anything about the size of this triangle? Let me redraw this. You know this length is going to be 2 plus r. So you have 2 and you have r. So this length is 2 plus r. What about this length? It's going to be r plus 1. So 1 plus r. And this length is going to be 2 plus 1 or 3. So you have a triangle going on, but that's not telling us too much. It's giving us a starting point, but you cannot get an equation that's going to help you figure out what r is. And the reason this thing is not sufficient for us to figure out r is because you're not taking the largest semicircle into account. From what we have done, this circle can be this small, this circle can be this, this big, or this circle can be immensely big. We, by just drawing this triangle, we're not giving it any constraint on how big it can grow. We have to take the large semicircle into account that's restricting how big this circle can be. And how we can do that is by looking at the center of the largest semicircle. And since the diameter of the largest semicircle is 6, 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, the center is going to be right here, which is going to be halfway. So the radius of the large semicircle is 3, so this length is 3, this length is 3. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect the dots once again. I'm going to connect it to the center. And do we know anything about this length? Do we know how long this is? Well, if you keep on extending it, the entire thing is going to be 3 because it's the radius of the largest semicircle. And you're taking away r, so you're taking away r from 3, so it's going to be 3 minus r. And this length is 1 and this length is 2 because the, this point, it, the radius of the large semicircle is 3. So this, the entire, the radius of it has to be 3 and to the left of a, you have 2, so this has to be 1. Okay. So let's plot what we know. This thing is 1, this thing is 2, and let's figure out r. And how I'm going to do it, I'm going to use law of cosine because I see two supplementary angles. So you have theta and 180 minus theta. And when you have supplementary angle, law of cosine can greatly simplify it because cosine of theta is equal to negative cosine of 180 minus theta. And if you forgot this or do not know why it is, well, think about a unit circle. This thing is going to be theta. This thing is going to be 180 minus theta. The x coordinates are opposite. So cosines are opposite. So let's use that fact. And let me rewrite law of cosine just for the sake of it so we, we don't get confused and I don't get confused. So law of cosine tell you when you have a triangle and you have some data and the opposite side is C and two sides are A and B, you can switch A and B around, but C is going to be opposite side to the angle. You know C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine data, or cosine data is equal to C squared minus A squared minus B squared over negative 2AB. I just solved this equation for cosine of data. So let's use that. So we know cosine of data, looking at this triangle, is going to be cosine of data is going to be c squared or 2 plus r squared minus 3 minus r squared minus 1 over negative 2 times 3 minus r times 1. So this thing is cosine data. How about cosine of 180 minus data? Well, that's going to be negative of this. So negative of this. So you know Co negative of cosine of 180 minus theta is going to equal cosine of theta. And what's cosine of 180 minus theta? We'll apply low cosine to this triangle. Get you 1 plus r squared minus 3 minus r squared minus 2 squared over 4 divided by negative 2 times 3 minus r times 2. 
So let's simplify this a bit. Let's multiply both sides by 2 times 3 minus r, so these things go away. And let's multiply both sides by a negative sign, so this thing goes away, this negative sign goes away. So you have negative 2 down below right here. So let's multiply both sides by negative 2. So you have negative 2 times 2 plus r squared plus 2 times 3 minus r squared plus 2 is equal to 1 plus r squared minus 3 minus r squared minus 4. Let's try to simplify this. You have 2 3 minus r squared. You have negative 1 3 minus r squared. That's same thing as, let me keep two, uh, negative 2 times 2 plus r squared. The same thing as 3 times 3 minus r squared. I just move this over to the left. And you have negative 1 plus r squared. And you have negative 2, negative 4. Let's continue simplifying this. Let's expand. Negative 2 times 4 plus 4r plus r squared. I just expanded this expression. Plus 3 times 9 minus 6r plus r squared. Minus 1 plus 2r plus r squared is equal to negative 6. Okay, so we have negative 8 minus 8r, and let me actually do it step by step. You have negative 8, you have 27, and you have negative 1. That's equal to, if I can, if I don't make a mistake, that's 18. And you have negative 8r, negative 18r, and negative 2r, so that's going to be negative 28r, and how many r squared? You have negative 2r squared, 3r squared, and negative r squared, that's 0r squared is equal to negative 6, or 24 is 28r, also known as r is equal to 24 over 28, dividing by 4 gets you 6 over 7. So that's it. The answer is 6 over 7. So our, our answer for this problem 16 is going to be B.